I want to talk a little bit about Picard. And let me say this, first of all, that the, the show, is, it's a good show. It's a good science fiction show. It's, it, there's, there's great action. There's uh, great characters. Um, um, they're, uh, almost all of them are, are enjoyable to uh, see them interact with Picard. And yeah, there, there's, there's certain things about it that I, I, I enjoyed a lot. Uh, my biggest issue with it uh, is that Picard series is not Star Trek. It doesn't fit Roddenberry's vision at all. And to me, uh, growing up watching Star Trek, I enjoyed the idea of a, of a our society uh, evolving to something more enlightened. And now that, I mean, Roddenberry's passed a long time and we have new showrunners putting their vision of Star Trek in. And I'm just, it's, it's, to me, it waters down Star Trek. You know, Star Trek is this ideal. And then there's this, such an emphasis on science, on exploration, on, on trying to be a, a, a better human being. Um, and the show, I mean, I mean, I try not to think about, I mean, every show has plot holes. If you think <laughs> a lot, you know, think, if you think about it, start deconstructing things. Uh, but it's just, it suddenly becomes a little absurd, you know. Uh, the, the idea that there's a, a race, 200,000 year old race of androids that existed long before anything that now if once there's a new, once new androids realize that they can contact them, they'll come down and destroy all humanoids. And the way they present it is almost like a, like a robot hell, robot demons of sort. Okay. Uh, it, it's it's, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, the fact that even, even to the first episode, like the idea of Federation being afraid of exploring science because of a of, of fear of sins and, and, and fear that they may uh, cause havoc. And to me, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. I, I understand that they were trying to use those elements to kind of relate, become relatable to, to um, I guess, to the viewer, you know, uh, show that as a reflection of that to the real world. But I, I don't think that was really necessary for those type of things. Um, I, it, it's, it, does, it, it doesn't make sense in the context of everything that is Star Trek. And that's that's my problem with it. Um, even the little things, you know, I know I'm being nitpicky, but like even such a little thing as cursing, you know, uh, cursing was, it's, it's, it's a strange thing in the uh, 23rd century, uh, 24th century, depending which, where you are in Star Trek. Um, you know, even so, so much though, that I still remember that scene in Star Trek for the voyage home, I'm where uh, someone calls, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, um, uh, someone called Kirk an ass, and he just said oh, double ass to you. So not sure what he meant by that. That was that was strange to him. And then and now it's like uh, with Picard it, and with even Discovery, everyone's like cursing back and forth, and they just it's just it's just it, it, the problem with that is like it's like oh, why are you being so nitpicky? Language is a very uh, is a, language is a reflection of culture and society. You know, if you want to know how, if you want to study a culture, best check out their language, first of all. See what they use to identify things. And the fact that, it, to me, that the, the way that, that society was developed by Roddenberry, no way they would, would, would be as, uh, I feel like an old person, like, don't be vulgar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, watch your mouth, you know. No, but no. It, it, my point is, it's, it's the language of the show is just changed drastically. And it's, I feel like it's dumbing down. You know, so that it could try to attract more viewers, and I'm like, okay, then I don't know. I feel like like the show is shifting more and more away from what it is, and it's becoming just a generic sci-fi show. And I think that's the problem with Picard. It's yeah. it's 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 a good it's a good sci-fi show, but it's not a good Star Trek show. And I think right. that's it. Just it's 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 just so flawed because of that. Yeah, yeah, I I, I would agree. Um... And, and I don't think you're being nitpicky about the swearing at all. Um, as you said, uh, language is culture. And the culture that we've seen um, on screen for 30 plus years isn't, isn't vulgar like that. They don't swear like that. They don't talk like us. They've always sounded just a little bit stilted to our ears. Um, and I think that had several important um, um, effects. Um, 
one, it, it was a signal that they were more enlightened, um, more, you know, progressive. It also helped them to sound like someplace else uh, and some when else. They, they were us, but they were changed. They weren't exactly like us. Um, and I think by making them swear, they're making them sound exactly like us. And what's the point of me watching a story about the 24th century if people sound like, just like us, like going outside and then talking to normal people, which you're not allowed to do. Don't go outside and talk to people. <laughs> Quarantine, right stay now. where you are, stay inside and watch videos. But anyway, um, so I, I, think, I think that's really important. And, and if you're not, uh, if you're not convinced by that argument, if you if you think that's too flighty and uh, namby pamby and maybe political correct, there's the canon argument. It's been established as canon on screen that they don't swear because Kirk didn't know how to do it. So damn it, there you go. There's a Trekkie argument for you. It's not canon, so they don't do it. So shut the hell up. <laughs> yeah. Now that, that the series still has a lot of things to answer for, that I, 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 like Soong has a son, and that was never really mentioned before. Okay. Um, oh, I gotta say, uh, it has become a bit of a Star Trek tradition for people to suddenly develop relatives that no one's mentioned before. Uh, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Spock <laughs> is uh, a brother. Uh, okay, I guess. See, little things I can, I can forgive like like the fact that the, the so the, the a lot of the current androids are hiding out on a planet and it's protected by giant flowers that swallow up ships and suck their energy i, I don't know i don't okay. get it I, I i okay all right whatever all right you know i, I could i could let that slide i could let slide soon sun i could let slide uh, uh the fact soon had a song which i again i was i don't remember that being anywhere I, I i actually checked on google like you know maybe i just missed it in some episode or whatever but no it's never mentioned before and it's uh um uh, i always kind of like the idea that he didn't have a son because that kind of yeah, psychologically I, dovetailed with him being so determined to create life right you know i couldn't yeah, exactly. have a son of my own for some reason so i'm building a son Right, that kind of makes sense. But somehow if he had a biological son, I mean, I'm not saying he couldn't have then devoted his life to creating life, but I don't know. It just doesn't, not having a son, not having offspring kind of, kind of helps the story along yeah. a little bit in my yeah. opinion. But. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to understand more by why, how, like, so if the Raman homework got destroyed, why exactly do they need the Federation for help? Romulan's a, the Romulan Empire is huge. Yeah, like, it's the why, Star it's Empire. So, it's gigantic. Yeah, it's, it's so, the, so they all, did all 99% of Romulans stay in one planet? Well, I mean, how? I mean, uh, if, if the Earth was destroyed, it was, the Federation would still exist because it's, it's I don't know. Yes, yes. and make, humans would still exist. But, you know, the new writers um, of, 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 uh, of Par Picard and Discovery and the the latest movies, I don't think they care. I, I just don't think they care about things like that. Uh, in in uh, the reboot of Star Trek, right? The the Nero, or whoever the hell he is, shows up to destroy Vulcan. Vulcan, right? You know, a spacefaring race. The guys who contacted Earth, so they've had warp drive before Earth, before everybody, right? Well, maybe not before everybody, but for a long time, they're a space-faring yeah. race. He shows up in orbit with his killer ship. Where are the Vulcan ships? Where are the Vulcan satellites? Nothing. It's like they're living on a ball of dirt, and they've never left their... There's nothing there. <laughs> they're, they're supposed to be a space-faring race. They're not just going to sit there and twiddle their thumbs as a huge asteroid... I mean, a huge uh, satellite shows up and starts killing their planet. No, my, my wife and I were talking about this the other day. This is the tragedy of fandom. So when a franchise passes away from its original creator and it's made by other people, it ends up being made, and this might be inevitable, it ends up being made by people 
who don't love it as much as the fans do. And that, and I guess that kind of makes sense because for them, it's just a job. Right? The guys who write Star Trek have, have other things to do. They, they write things. That, even the actors, they show up, they say their lines, they leave. Um, so for them, it's a paycheck. It's a means to an end. For a fan, we don't have to watch the show at all. We're, you know, there's, there's no other reason for us to watch it than the fact that we love it. And so you're going to end up with a situation where the fans care more about the show than the people who are making it. And that means that the show is never going to be as good as the fans want it to be. Nothing is ever perfect. That is, wow, that's like really poetically bleak. <laughs> <laughs> So well, no, I, 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 but I, I think you're right. I think I, I think I have to come to grips is that Ron Burry is is long gone, and yeah. that, and that it'll never, it'll never be as good again. I think I have to accept that and just say, you know what, I'll I'll stick to Star Trek the role playing game to go back and and enjoy the nostalgia. I'll I'll re I'll I'll keep my DVDs of the Star Trek Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and so forth, but. Um, you know, anything new, I was going to just shrug my shoulder and say, it's, that my, the way I feel about it is the way I feel about how Picard ended, where Picard died and his mind got transferred to a synthetic Spoilers. body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's how I feel about how Star Trek is now. It's like, I feel like it's died and it's living on artificially. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I um, think you're and, right and there. I, and, well, <laughs> I, 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 I wish the, the fandom would do more of an outcry about it. Like say, you know, it, 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 I get disheartened when I go to some of the uh, forums on you know, Reddit, Facebook, and I hear them talk about Ricard. And I'm like, oh, it's not bad. It's pretty good. You know, oh, isn't it great to see Riker and Troy again? And, you know, and I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's I don't know. It's like, don't, don't, don't you care about how the fact that this is not really in the spirit of Star Trek? And I just, it just goes over their heads. And I just like, all right, maybe it's just me. Uh, no, you know, I, I think, and I want to be fair here, um, it's, it's, it's a television show, and I think to some people, maybe a lot of people, it's just a television show. Um, but for me, uh, the reason, um, you know, I get so upset about the new movies and Discovery and, and, and Picard, because to me, Star Trek is important in a way that, say, Star Wars isn't. I mean, I love Star Wars, but it's not important. Um, Star Trek is important. Star Trek is the one optimistic television, uh, television science fiction. It's, it's, it's the one future uh, on television that you would want to live in, or at least it was. And it was inspiring. People have been inspired by Star Trek to go out and do things, to invent things. Engineers have been inspired by Star Trek. Astronauts, you know, just everyday people have been inspired to be better, uh, to, to, to see if they could be better people. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to overplay this, but uh, Star Trek showed us a wor world uh, where we'd overcome poverty and war and racism, something we could strive for. And the new Star Trek has thrown that all away um, in favor of ratings. They, they want to try to meet, reach more people. Um, and they will. There were, you know, as many, you know, as many Trekkies other are, are they were still in the minority. Other, you know, I think, um, I think film and television has shown that, you know, a, a gritty, you know, dark future m may get more uh, views, may be more popular, but it's, it's not Star Trek. And, and they're leaving fans behind um, to go make more money from, you know, larger ratings. And uh, that's really sad. Star Trek Picard will inspire nobody. Um, it doesn't say anything about the future. It doesn't say anything, you know, it's not, 
it's not a future you want to strive for. Um, and it's, that's, that's really sad. Um, but on the, on the uh, plus side, we still have all the, uh, the old Star Trek, you know, you go on the Netflix, you've still got the original series. You've got, you've got Voyager, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine. You've got all that great stuff. Um, and for me, that is where canon ends. You were saying that canon was important to you. Canon's in, sort of important to me. The spirit is more important to me. Um, and I'm perfectly willing to say that uh, this new stuff, it's your canon, it's not mine. If I... If, if, if I play Star Trek, the role-playing game with Modifius, check out our reviews, <laughs> it will be with the old canon. Picard will not be canon. Discovery will not be canon. Into Darkness will not be canon. You know, canon is just what somebody thinks should be the, the right stuff. Canon's for you to decide. And in my canon, you know, there is no last Jedi. There is a new Republic. <laughs> so well, that's my canon in Star Wars, and and this and and my canon for Star Trek stops with Voyager, or maybe some of the movies. I don't know. But the point is, yeah. you know, I have my canon, and that's what I play with. And and I'm, you know, it it's sad, but I've just had to let go, some of these franchises go. Um, Star Trek is is dead. You know, I, I don't care anymore. Uh, I'll check out the new stuff, but I don't I don't expect anything and I'm just a little disappointed. Star Wars is over. Uh, I don't know, The Mandalorian, maybe some of the new stuff has come out, but the new saga movies were completely pointless and did nothing. Um, so I honestly don't care. If they move on that timeline, I'm not interested anymore. Indiana Jones, it's over. I mean, mm. I'll kind of check out this new movie, but I'm not expecting much. The last one was terrible. So we just some we just have to accept that nothing lasts forever. And and it probably yeah. shouldn't. Yeah, true. So <laughs> those of you watching <laughs> this <laughs> if you made it this um, far congratulations <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah let us know let us know what you think in the comments below uh, do you agree start an argument in the comments below <laughs> yes yeah bring it on i'm ready that's no, right no, no. no but, ser but seriously though if whether you like it or not let us know let us know what you think and why you know um uh, i'm very curious uh, uh, i mean i'll be honest with you. you could convince me that picard is good it, it's that star trek is not dead yeah, I, I want to hear it. I want to. I I want to hope, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll All see. Right.